guess I should wait till I get there. Okay, so we're going to get started again. And uh, just as people are coming back, I wanted to just take a little pulse here. In terms of uh, the different sessions that you all were at, hopefully you were all at, at one of the different breakout sessions. Uh, was there uh, a topic, let's say group number one, was there a, a topic that came up that you sort of focused on? Anybody from group one? I'm just killing time here while we're... <laughs> okay, maybe I won't do that, okay. The reason, the reason I'm asking that question is that I was in group three and although we didn't exclusively talk about maintenance, maintenance was uh, quite, a, quite a topic uh, that we addressed. And I thought, oh, well, what a coincidence, because the next speaker is going to tell us about uh, maintenance at Oregon Health Science University. If you're not from, that, from this area, that's the, uh, I think, the largest employer in the city of Portland. It's uh, health science affiliated with the state university system. And uh, they have more buildings, I think, than probably any other building owner in the city, although I'm not sure about that. But they have a lot of roofs and they have a lot of landscape that they maintain. So our next, our speaker is uh, Chad Sorber, he is a horticulturalist at OHSU, specializing in sustainable landscaping. He is in charge of the maintenance, of maintaining over 88,000 square feet of green roofs of all shapes and sizes. So please welcome Chad. Thanks, Tom. And I just wanted to thank Matt for organizing this today. I think it was a great uh, event so far. I look forward to other presentations this afternoon. Uh, like Tom said, I am a horticulturalist at OHSU, uh, specializing in sustainable landscaping projects including maintaining our green roofs uh, at the Markham Hill campus. Uh, we have over 88,000 square feet of green roofs. Um, and the reason I put this presentation together is because I feel like there's a lot of information out there uh, about the front end of, of eco roofs, the, the benefits, the, the return on investment, uh, the design aspect. And I wanted to, to talk a little bit more about uh, the maintenance of the roofs. Um, and about what happens after the first couple years of establishment. And uh, hopefully these roofs are gonna be lasting 40 years or more uh, in Portland. And uh, what, what are we doing on these roofs uh, to keep them functioning and keep them uh, performing the way we want them to? Let's see. And so today, uh, I'll, first I'll talk about OHSU's green roofs. Uh, to give a little background on, on what I'm maintaining up at Markham Hill and on our Southwest Waterfront campus. Uh, then we'll talk about keys to success, uh, including the design of the eco roofs, um, weed control, of course, uh, how, are we, how are we dealing with weeds uh, on the roofs, and uh, developing a maintenance schedule for, uh, for our roofs. Last, then I'll talk about lessons learned uh, up at OHSU, and I'll end hopefully with some time for, for questions. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit generally about maintenance, and if you have any specific questions uh, about maintaining your roofs on how to deal with weeds in particular or, or, or any specific questions, uh, I'll be open to that at the end of the presentation. What I will not be talking about today is cost of maintenance as far as how much it costs per square foot. Um, so I'll leave that to someone else to talk about. So at OHSU, first of all, a little definition um, of eco roofs uh, versus roof gardens. Uh, eco roofs are generally uh, lower growing plant material, thin soil profile, and are generally used for stormwater management purposes. And uh, as opposed to roof gardens, which sometimes have a deeper soil profile, sometimes have larger plant material, and are a lot of times used for human use, whether it's rooftop patios, gardens, um, or something like that. Uh, at OHSU, we have nine eco roofs and seven roof gardens. Um, 
And together, I call them green roofs. And a lot of times I substitute eco roofs for green roofs. They're kind of interchangeable. Um, but all in all, uh, we're looking at 88,000 square feet. Our largest eco roof is over 15,000 square feet, pictured here at the um, Center for Health and Healing at the Southwest Waterfront Campus um, at the bottom of the tram. And over here is also uh, our largest rooftop garden, which is actually the roof of a four-story uh, parking structure right next to the Center for Health and Healing at the bottom of the tram. So OHSU's uh, green roofs. Uh, why do we have green roofs? What are our goals? At OHSU, our goals are stormwater management, for one. Uh, aesthetic value. We have kind of a unique campus on the hillside where we have a lot of opportunities for looking down on other buildings. And a lot of patient rooms, a lot of uh, employee offices that look down upon other rooftops. And so aesthetic value is an important goal of our, our, our green roofs. Uh, functional space, pictured here, we have a, a rooftop patio uh, for employees to, to have lunch and have outside meetings in the summertime. Um, extended roof life and energy efficiency are also goals of our green roofs. The origin of which just use green roofs, as you can see, most of them are from new construction. Uh, so they're designed into new buildings and uh, we're currently working on construction on a new building on the southwest waterfront, which will also include three new green roofs. Um, in the past couple of years, we've had success uh, with re-roofing projects where we've uh, taken established buildings and um, incorporated green roofs onto replacing the existing rooftops, which were due for replacement anyway. And uh, we went ahead and uh, you know, checked on the structural capacity and uh, were successful in re-roofing uh, those projects. And then the one natural green roof that you see there is actually um, just a small bus stop structure that we have that has naturally grown mosses, ferns, and uh, some other plant material on it. It's only about 150 square feet, but uh, it's interesting. We'll count it. <laughs> so keys to success uh, we're finding at OHSU. Um, our first eco roofs went in in 2006, and we've had a few different maintenance strategies uh, for taking care of these roofs throughout the years. And um, it's kind of varied from uh, not much maintenance, go up there once or twice a year and, and let it go. And uh, we've also kind of taken a middle ground where we go up there occasionally a few times a year. And we've also done the intensive type of maintenance where we're continually monitoring it and treating weeds as they, as they approach. So these are some keys to success that we're finding uh, are helpful for us in, in our current program. And the first one revolves around design. And <clears throat> here you can see a design for two of our, our re-roofing projects on our Hospital South and Hatfield Research Center. And we're finding that getting involved um, with design from the maintenance perspective is important early, as early in the process as possible for a couple reasons. And one is to, um, so that the maintenance staff has a better idea of what they're maintaining. Uh, these rooftop gardens are a very unique environment to grow plants in. Uh, they have a lot of sun exposure, a lot of heat, and because of the environment, uh, a lot of times we're using a different plant palette than we would normally in the landscape. And, uh, and with that, uh, the, the staff that's maintaining these roofs uh, are, are used to maintaining a certain palette of plants, and they may not be familiar with the, the plants used on an eco-roof. And so getting involved early and, and, and having the maintenance staff uh, learn about the plant material, um, have some input as far as what plants they think would be successful in this situation, or uh, at the very least learning about new plants and, and their requirements and what to expect with them. So the early input, input and uh, involvement is important. 
Um, access is also a, a key to success for sure we're finding up on campus. Some of our, our early eco roofs um, had some challenging access situations where uh, some of them were on fourth floor uh, roof tops and the only way to get to the roof was using a 40 foot extension ladder leaned up against the building which uh, was challenging you know to manage the weeds when uh, every time you need to go up on that roof you're using a 40 foot extension ladder and uh, also anytime you're taking any equipment up on the fourth floor now you're using a rope and pulley kind of situation to get any equipment up there and now you have to get the weeds off of the roof and so access to these roofs we're finding is is crucial you're going to need to get up on that roof to do some sort of maintenance and so thinking about how that staff gets up there uh, is important design intent uh, being involved with the architect or whoever may be designing the roof to understand what their intent is what are they trying to establish on the roof um, I know it's happened I know I've personally done this on some of our roofs where I've gone in managing weeds thinking I'm doing a good job making sure I'm getting ahead of the game and I'm actually pulling plants that were part of the design and I know it's happened on other roofs as well and it was simply a, a, a miscommunication you know th there wasn't that connection between what was the design intent and, and what was actually happening and so you know it's important to for the maintenance staff to, to have that connection with the design team to make sure that everybody's on the same page plant material like I talked about plant palette is oftentimes uh, very different on rooftops and um, it's important that that the maintenance staff understand uh, the plants they're working with uh, irrigation plan uh, green roofs vary a lot with the amount of irrigation that they require uh, some roofs uh, only require an establishment period the first two years they require water to get established and then the plan is for no more irrigation uh, other rooftops uh, have plant material that will require water as long as those plants are there and so it's important for the maintenance people to know what the plan is long term are we only irrigating for the first two years uh, and if so uh, what are the signs we're looking for where we could stop irrigation um, and if the plant material <coughs> excuse me requires uh, long-term watering uh, we need to make sure we're on the same page about that as built are important um, especially for winterizing uh, irrigation systems on green roofs uh, to make sure we're preventing uh, freeze problems with water in our pipes uh, and to make sure that we know where the internal point of connection is so that we can properly uh, winterize systems um, s to avoid uh, uh, freeze problems um, again know the plan uh, the maintenance plan is also important um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later here's a good example of access being important um, here we have about three or four sto stories in a very steep slope sloping away here uh, this is just a little small planting bed along the building here um, and there's the top which is actually a driveway um, and so in here these were planted in 2006 I believe and in here this is a wintertime picture but these are red alder trees that have grown from seed this is a butterfly bush that has grown from seed I think these are alders and big maples in here um, and so these are trees growing in about six inches of soil uh, not a good situation um, but how do we get them out uh, we're thinking about repelling <laughs> from the top uh, otherwise we're not really sure we're possibly using some of the Coast Guard helicopters <laughs> to come in and get the, the trees out of there <laughs>
So that was the, de the design aspect of keys to success. Uh, next is weed control, obviously the popular subject with the green roof maintenance. What do you do about weeds? First of all, are there weeds? Will weeds grow on a ninth story building? And if so, what do you do about them? Well, will weeds grow on a roof? Yes, they will. We've seen it a lot. In fact, we have ninth story buildings where there are uh, Douglas fir growing on. Uh, there's big leaf maple, um, along with you know the palette of all the other weeds you would find in a normal landscape. And uh, you know how do the seeds get there? Uh, they either blow in, they come from birds, uh, they come in on uh, with the plants from the nursery, or they come in on uh, uh, the workers' boots, pant legs, something like that. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter too much how they get there, but they get there. And, and weeds will definitely grow on your roof. Uh, do you have to control the weeds? Do you have to actively remove the weeds? Um, that's a question, I think, that, that depends on each individual roof and what your goals are for that roof. Um, a lot of our roofs are highly visible, and, and aesthetics are one of our goals. And obviously, if aesthetics are your goal, then you probably need to weed till you're satisfied with the aesthetics of your roof. Um, if you have a roof that's on the back side of a building and it's a stormwater management uh, is your goal with the roof, um, weeding would probably be uh, less needed uh, as long as the desirable plants are functioning. Um, sometimes uh, weeds will outcompete your desirable plants on a green roof. Um, and so it won't function the way it's designed and intended to. And so in that case, you would weed uh, as long as, to keep the roof functional, doing, doing what it's intended to. Uh, there are probably cases where you, where you wouldn't have to weed at all. Um, we don't have any of those cases up on the hill. I'm not really sure <laughs> where they would be. But theoretically, it's possible, I suppose. Here's a picture from Norway. Uh, actually, kind of reminds me a little bit of a couple of our roofs I've, I've seen with these eight foot tall big leaf maples growing in you know, six inches of soil. And, and uh, as you can see here, the concern is obviously structure. <laughs> um, and, and you know, with our roofs, I'm, I'm guessing this probably doesn't have the rubber membrane that most of our roofs do. But with our roofs, the rubber membrane is certainly a concern. Uh, and keeping the roof functional. Um, and of course, aesthetic. So though some people might say that that's uh, aesthetically pleasing, I guess. Um, so weed control strategies. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we've tried a few different techniques. Um, here's a roof, one of those roofs I was talking about, um, actually at the top of the tram where this is on top of a fourth floor where we would prop a ladder up here, a 40-foot ladder to get there. This is a butterfly bush here, uh, a, a variety of different weeds growing in here. The desirable plant material is this Japanese bloodgrass, and a Mexican feather grass is in here somewhere. And, uh, and, and this, is, this is probably the most challenging roof for us to access. And um, one of our less visible roofs. And so we have a little bit less of an intense maintenance program with this roof in particular uh, because of accessibility and because of visibility. Um, um, but, but we're finding with, it, with our different techniques on campus that especially with our newly established green roofs is that preventing seeds is a lot easier than managing them once they get there. And so if, you, if you're starting with a fresh start, a brand new eco roof, going in there and, and being proactive about getting weeds out of there before they start producing seeds and, and start reproducing on your roof, it's much easier to prevent multiple weeds from coming up than once, once the seed bank is there, uh, they're, they're difficult to remove. And, and it's a long, hard battle. To, to get back to, to a weedless roof.
not sure what that is. <laughs> well, let's see, how much time do you have? 19 minutes? Okay, well, you don't have that much time anyway. No. Okay, so uh, let's go back to, back to that. Should. There we go. Thanks. And so another strategy uh, for weed control is to outcompete them dense very plantly, or, or I'm sorry, plant very densely uh, to, to eliminate those empty soil spaces where seeds would, or, or you know, weed seeds would, would go and, 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 and grow. Um, and if, uh, if you have some dieback from the original plantings, replant as soon as possible. Because if you have some open soil space, weed seeds will find it and they will grow. And so outcompete the weeds. Uh, is, is definitely a, a good strategy. Um, tolerance is, is another strategy. Like I said, with this roof here, uh, there's, there's limited visibility. Um, it's functioning as a stormwater management uh, uh, roof. And um, certainly we got rid of the large butterfly bush and other large plant material that was growing in here that would threaten the structure of the roof, but uh, uh, clover, uh, dandelions, false dandelions, sometimes it's okay, you know, to let weeds grow. And uh, it definitely depends on the individual situation, um, but tolerance is certainly a strategy uh, to deal with weeds. Other maintenance issues on roofs, um, clearing drains, Actually, this goes back to design uh, to make sure that the maintenance folks understand kind of the layout of the roof too, not just the vegetative material, also the soil depth, where the drains are, how the roof is to drain, and how it's to function overall as a structure uh, aside from the plant material. But clearing drains, occasionally we have drains that get uh, blocked up from leaf material and, and drop needles and, and branches and other organic material that just simply need to be cleared out so that, so that there isn't any backup. Standing water on the roofs is a bad thing. Um, here in this picture, we had a, a rain shadow situation that we actually come across somewhat frequently on campus where um, above here, this is the fourth floor uh, of a nine-story building. Above here, a few floors is a little overhang um, where it blocks the rain from getting to this section. So it stays dry in here throughout the winter time. And we had a lot of plant dieback originally here. And then right here, you could see a bunch of splashback on the window of these offices, which overlook Portland and Mount Hood, and a beautiful view from these offices that are covered in mud. And um, uh, above there was a little eave from the rooftop that was splashing down here. And so uh, the solution we, we came up with here was to simply uh, put in a, a barrier, a filter fabric, and some, some river rock. Uh, the width of that rain shadow is what we went along. And uh, in here, we also had some dieback where we had to replant uh, in an established green roof area uh, to, to, again, outcompete those weeds. Um, but those are some of the other maintenance issues that we come across. So we talked about design, weed control. A maintenance schedule is also um, pretty important for uh, a good plan for, for long-term maintenance of our, our green roofs. And I think a schedule really depends on, on the individual roof. It is really gonna vary depending on, uh, roof by roof. And it really depends on your goals for the roof. Again, back to the goals, aesthetics, stormwater management, usable space. Uh, what is it being used for? What, what do you want to see it looking like, uh, functioning like? Um, and, and basing your maintenance schedule around those goals. Um, but I think more than anything, what a maintenance schedule does is it makes sure that you're monitoring the roof. 
Because sometimes what happens, I, I know it's happened with us, is that we, we, we spend a lot of time on the front end of, of talking about benefits and, and design, and we put a lot of work in the front end and in installation, and then sometimes we forget about it. We put it up there, and then, and then we walk away. And, and so the, the schedule, what the schedule does is make sure that we have maintenance staff going up there and regularly checking the situation. And, and like we talked about earlier, getting ahead staying ahead of the weeds. Prevention is much easier uh, than managing the weeds. And so regular monitoring and, uh, and then adjusting as needed. Um, and then also documentation. We're finding that documenting um, the amount of hours that we spend on a roof, uh, what tasks we're doing. Uh, if nothing else, we could look back and say, hey, when was the last time anybody was up on that roof? Oh, we really need to get up there. or you know, it was just a week ago, it's, it's still good. Um, and so documentation is a good way of, of just making sure uh, we're, we're, we're keeping that regularity with the monitoring. <coughs> so our maintenance schedule up at OHSU, um, for the establishment period, first two to three years, we're very active about monitoring. We're up there every two weeks or more, um, making sure we're at least looking at it and seeing what's going on on the roof, and weeding as needed. And this every two weeks is more for the um, active growing period, I would say probably March through November is, is the every two weeks. The winter time, we, we, we don't need to go up there that often, but we still look at it once a month at least. Um, and then the weeding is as needed. It, it, there's not really an easy way to, uh, to schedule, you need to weed every so often. It really depends on the individual situation. The monitoring is important, though, to be regular about the monitoring and stay ahead of the weeds. Uh, irrigation, uh, while you're monitoring weeds, make sure that irrigation has good coverage. Uh, there aren't any breaks in your system where there's standing water on roofs is not a good thing. Um, and adjusting it as needed to make sure that your, your new plants are getting the water they require uh, to become established. The long-term uh, maintenance schedule, uh, like I said, depends on the roof. Um, but generally, we're monitoring every two to four weeks. Uh, again, with the same idea is we're not weeding every two to four weeks. But uh, it's easier to monitor and, and be up there every two weeks. And if you see uh, a handful of weeds, it's easier to spend 10 minutes getting a handful of weeds than it is to wait uh, months and then you have uh, uh, bags and bags full of weeds. And so uh, the monitoring again is important and weeding just as needed. Um, irrigation, uh, again, it depends on the roof. Sometimes with establishment, there is no, there is no irrigation after establishment. Um, but if there is irrigation, uh, especially in some of our older roofs, uh, you need to make sure it's working properly and there aren't any breaks in your system. Uh, especially with drip systems that have long run times. If there's a break with, with a drip irrigation system, it's going to be uh, a lot of water uh, on your roof. And so you need to go up there and physically watch it while it's watering and, and make sure that there isn't any ponding, any standing water, anything like that. So our review here, uh, we talked about OHSU's green roofs, uh, keys to success. Um, the design aspect, getting involved early is important. Uh, weed control, uh, developing a maintenance schedule, uh, most importantly to make sure that you're monitoring regularly so that you know what's going on on your roof. Uh, and lessons learned at OHSU. I think um, the biggest lessons that we've learned, uh, I, I talked about, is getting involved early um, with the maintenance staff being involved with the design process instead of uh, being handed a landscape with an unfamiliar palette of plants that they, they're, they're not familiar with maintaining, they're not familiar with, uh, they may not be familiar with the irrigation system used on, on, on the roof, and, uh, and, and just knowing the plan. Uh, like we, it was mentioned earlier about 
uh, with the installment, getting soil up to the roof, getting plant material up to the roof. It's the same thing with maintenance, getting the weeds off of the roof, getting equipment to maintain it, if you need equipment to maintain it onto the roof, uh, is a challenge. And, and it's important uh, to, to think about those things early so that you can take care of them uh, before uh, it's installed. Um, good access uh, is another uh, uh, important thing. Um, getting as built so that you know what's going on with the structure of the roof, including drains, including underground irrigation, uh, and the membrane setup. Uh, so everyone uh, knows what's going on underneath the, the soil and the plant material. Uh, the design intent, like we talked about, and uh, the overall layout of the green roof. Weed control. Regular frequent weeding is ideal, if possible. Uh, the more often you visit, uh, our strategy currently is visit more often and spend less time each time you're there, as opposed to what used to be our strategy was go less often and spend a lot of time while you're there getting rid of all of those weeds. Now go more often, less time. Uh, and prevention is easier than suppression. And that's it. Thanks. Are there any uh, questions? Yeah. Um, I recognize that different groups have different goals, uh, but you're in a unique position to really comment on the difference between establishing an eco roof and an eco roof that's been there for a long time and the difference between establishment and an equilibrium. How does an uh, eco roof develop over time? What's the difference between a roof that's been there a long time versus one you're establishing? Yeah, so the question is, um, what is the difference between, uh, I think, from the maintenance perspective uh, of, of maintaining a, a roof during establishment versus uh, uh, maintaining a roof that is already established? Is that correct? Yeah. Um, and so the difference is maintaining a roof during the establishment period, the first two to three years, is certainly more intense. Certainly more time is put uh, towards the maintenance. Um, to uh, prevent those weeds and to establish the plants through irrigation and, and other cultural practices. Uh, established roofs uh, certainly take less time over time to maintain. Um, and uh, a lot of it is because uh, of the coverage, plant coverage of the soil media itself and less accessibility for the weeds and the reduction in the irrigation. And so there's certainly, the, the longer a roof is established, the less time you'll spend, generally speaking, uh, on the roof. Uh, I don't really know, uh, you know, any numbers or anything involved with that, but does that answer your question? Basically, and also, how do you see the roofs evolving, and is there a real difference um, that you see in a progression from an establishment to uh, a roof that is mature? Yeah, absolutely, a difference. Um, the, the plant material, what, what I think will be interesting is, is, is how long the plant material will survive in, in the limited soil media that it has. I think that'll be interesting. We haven't reached that point on any of our roofs at OHSU. Um, being six years old as, as some of our older roofs, um, but that'll be interesting to see, I think, how long the plant material will uh, thrive in, in the limited space that it has. Um, but over time, certainly, they, they evolve and they become, they fill in, they, they, they certainly look more aesthetically pleasing and, and, and yeah, evolve. Uh, what kind of stuff? The, what you were just talking about in terms of which plants are doing really well and which plants are, you know, spreading out or, you know, what, I, what, what do you document when you say you're doing documentation? Sure. When I, when I say I'm doing documentation, what I'm documenting is uh, time spent on a particular roof, uh, the activities we're doing 
on that roof while we're doing maintenance, whether it's weed control, whether it's irrigation uh, adjustments, or whether it's clearing drains or, or things like that. So we're documenting the actual maintenance activities. Also what we're documenting is the types of weeds we're seeing on the roof uh, and seeing how that evolves over time. Um, we're not really noted, documenting the, 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 uh, how well the plants are doing, uh, although I think we all have a, a, an, an idea of what plants are doing well, but we're not actually documenting that. Yeah. Um, is it possible? So, the obvious that Sure. So the question is, do weeds hurt the function of your, your eco roof? And I think uh, it depends on the weed. Uh, certainly some weeds uh, threaten the function of your roof, like some larger uh, weeds like trees or shrubs threaten the structure of your roof. And if the structure, uh, the rubber membrane in particular, if that's compromised, then uh, your roof is, is not functioning. And so as long as it doesn't threaten the, the, the structure, I think, of your roof. Um, and, it, you know, it depends on, on the weed. Like I said, if, if it threatens the, uh, uh, the desirable plant material, uh, it could also, I, I think, diminish the usefulness of your eco roof. Not necessarily, uh, weeds do serve a lot of the same functions as the desirable plant material, but the plant material is picked in particular uh, uh, for the function of, of managing stormwater. So as long as it's not outcompeting your desirable plant material or threatening the structure of your roof, then I think weeds are, are not hurting the function of your roof. That's, that's all we have time for. Again, thank you very much, Jeff.